we have OBS Studios 28. It's out the beta. We can jump in and test and help out users as much as possible. So uh, let's get into this really quick. So go ahead to the OBS page. You wanna also, if you download this, run this in portable mode. So I'll show you how to do that and set up on your desktop. So uh, grab an installer. Once you have your installer, go ahead and open your file. But what you're gonna do, what you wanna do is save it on your desktop specifically. Otherwise you will overwrite your OBS file and you won't be able to access it. So if you go ahead and create, you create the file on your desktop and makes it safer for you to use and test as you still have your safe uh, version of OBS running. Biggest feature of OBS 28, you can now record in HDR and also stream to YouTube in HDR. What to do is set it up in HDR, you go to advanced, you go ahead and change your color format to P P010 right here. You wanna select that one. Then you wanna go ahead and change this to Rec 21 as you can see here. And then color range, leave that as limited. And uh, basically in advanced, this is it. This is all you have to do for your HDR setup. Along with, you can also encode in your native NVENC encoder if you're using an AP. Uh, word of note, if you're looking for your settings, what you wanna do is go ahead and change output mode to simple, and then you'll be able to see in recording, you should be able to change your format encoder to NVENC HVCE new. So look at that, we have new features right here. I'll put your scale, customize this as you would. All of the new features to play around with and then optimize to the best settings that you're gonna need for YouTube. And if you're looking to stream into YouTube, you can go ahead and stream, go to switch, show all, go all the way to the bottom, HLS, and now you can connect your account and uh, you should be able to push out some high quality content on YouTube, guys. There's gonna be more in this because I know by the final version, we're gonna have a lot more features and customization when it comes to the HR on YouTube. Including the HDR support, what we're also gonna see is a lot of small fixes in OBS. They're gonna upgrade some scalings as you see here. There's a lot more details in the screening. It feels more natural natural looking as opposed to using a lot of themes and plugins. They also include a brand new plug, a brand new theme. If you go here to settings, change your name, Yami. I think it's a better approach than using the one that we've had with dark. I know you can also find themes online, but having built in ones means it's designed specifically to work with your application and your software. So props to you OBS for making that happen. Now on the bad news of this, we will lose access cute scorecard here. We will lose access to installing this on Windows 7, 8, I believe a couple of Linux versions, Mac, I have to confirm, I'll put that in the description. I believe that's 10.13, maybe 10.14. Your OBS plugins currently all have to be refreshed. So before they get to start working in this as stream effects, stream elements, um, almost I'd say 80% of the plugins at this rate will have to get rebuilt or re-examined to figure out how to make sure it works correctly. At this moment here, um, I think only a handful of my plugins were working in scripts. So there's a beta, hopefully in the final version by end of August, we'll be rolling around with new, uh, new features there. One of the biggest things we have featured here is native app Apple Silicon support. So it means they won't be running in a virtual environment and emulator on your Apple for whoever is running OBS on an Apple at this rate. No, no, no judgment, but why? Um, so yeah, we have built in support. They're still tweaking this a little bit. I tested on the Mac. I, I had some crashes, but it seems like it's after a couple of updates and reboots, it starts to work by itself. So uh, we'll see where this OBS 28 update leads us. Hopefully by the next one, they kind of patch that out. Um, you can go to the OBS forums and actually leave comments and notes below for the users to actually figure out what exactly they need to work with. So if you wanna join in the beta testing, I believe it's free for everybody at this rate. On the highlighted notes, we also have that the AMD encoder. So a lot of encoders, it feels like the big up OBS update has featured a lot of encoder upgrades. So a lot of new designs, uh, how the processors handled your graphics card, your computer, it should start running a lot smoother with a lot of the encoders and, and to each to every Everyone who's using the new OBS, I would definitely advise that you test your encoders. Uh, there's a new for AMF encoding, so the B frame support is going to be helped a lot in this. So for users who've had issues in the past where plugins weren't working or scripts, this this another huge feature, and I think a lot of people will enjoy. This is the fact that we no longer have to depend on audio input, capture different plugins, wave meter. It's all built into it itself. So the same way the application worked before, you should be able to go here, go to uh, audio application capture, set up audio so if you want to do music create that have it linked to the specific file you're looking for if you want to have another audio source for your game or discord you cannot do that built into the application natively so you know no another big application that's been added has been we have native filters built in for nvidia background removal so the native background
background filter has been added now from NVIDIA. Now we can use this as a video filter and not just your camera, but your videos. If you're on a call in Discord, if you're running multiple videos, if you have YouTube, you want to remove something in background, just have the characters on there or VTube, you can actually do that. All right, so on top of you can add the video filter into your camera, you can actually add it to different sources as an effect. Go right here, add video source, clear this out and cool. I'm out guys. I have camera, my other camera is cleared out video source if i wanted to duplicate this clone this and create special effects as nutty does i'm pretty sure you can come up with something just like this it actually looks like it's running smoother in here than it does on the regular camera i'm not surprised at this rate there's a couple of other quality of life fixes in this we have the ability to built-in web socket so you can customize that a little bit better than before uh, in your tools your web sockets you can customize that uh, show contents show different devices and then you can manage that in obs itself as opposed to the devices uh, i know that's one issue I suffered when I had like three or four tablets connected with different applications running. For our content creators, a big one you're going to enjoy is the fact that you can now split up your audio recordings and your video recordings as needed. So if you go to your output here, you enable advanced mode, scroll down to recordings, go ahead, split. You can split by time size, only split manually. I feel like it's going to help a lot of users out if you don't want to, if you want to have smaller file sizes to work with and piece them together. Uh, so you go ahead, set to two gigs, you know, that's about Oh, that should be enough of space needed as necessary. Um, all right, a big feature that actually I'm excited for as a streamer on YouTube is the fact that chat is built in natively into OBS. So not really, no more using, having to use stream elements. So on my streams, I do that all the time. I have to have a separate browser open for the chats. I don't know if there's a workaround for it, but it, it works for me or yeah, I just use a, a huge one for users is the fact that you will no longer have to use any applications as Camo Z or something else to save your settings for cameras, you can actually have that set within the browser itself. So as we can see here, I always have this problem. I have Logitech C922. It's always losing the color settings that we do. So now if we do in config, go ahead and adjust those colors, tweak the brightness, lower the exposures, the saturation. If I hit apply, okay. And then now we turn off the camera, turn it back on, it retains it. So if I were to even switch out the camera, let's see if we go to face cam, Cam, face cam is working perfectly fine. I switch back to the C922. We should have the same quality back. Unchanged, it's built into it. So now if you're suffering from issues, this should definitely help out your camera game. Yes, everyone should at some point invest into this and look into it and find the best way of improving your content right there. Oh, if you haven't also noticed, you can now see the, sh the pixel sizes based on your picture and direction as you're adjusting, it changes with you. So I think, you know, those little quality of life fixes are just phenomenal on this. Here's something a lot of users have either been asking for a one at some point if you notice in old obs we didn't have an accessibility page here well now we do you can go ahead and adjust the borders and colors and make it fit for anyone who just has a disability you want to help out see your streams a little bit more so you know there's a long list of applications and tweaks and different um, improvements that they're working on and this is gonna i say by the next three days they're gonna have an update to it with more fixes and patches so uh go ahead dive in check it out go ahead dive in check it out and if you are looking to stream or anything obs related just uh, check out the links for when I stream, we play games, we fix anything in OBS we can think of, and uh, I'll catch you guys next stream next video.